Well, here was our primary little acquisition from yesterday, and this is what I actually went down to pick up. So, don't know if you watched the first part of this. The way this was actually presented was this was going to be a South Bend lathe, and I had anticipated a little 9-inch Model A, Model B, something like that, and I thought, well, that'll be a cute little project for me to at least refurbish and uh, do a little bit of work to and maybe, you know, maybe flip it, maybe set it in the shop, add it to my collection of way too many lathes and pieces of machine tools and stuff. And, and we know I don't have enough projects as it is, so I thought, what's one more little South Bend? So when we got down there, what it was was this is a 10-inch Sheldon, a uh, SWQE, I believe is the model number. It'll be a 56-inch bed lathe. And the main reason that I drug it home, other than we'd already driven oh, about an hour to, to get down there, and this goes back out into an old farm community, old orchard community, that this is old equipment that's been tucked away in somebody's shop, and as, as people pass away, why well, pretty soon they get, you know, dispersed out, equipment gets sold, and, and that's kind of the case with this. There's uh, one of the shop buildings on one of their properties that's, that's uh, I think being sold. Somebody passed away, and it's uh, this is a lathe that had been handed down, and and the guy that I got it from knew virtually nothing about it, had no interest in it, and so I went down to see about it. So you already saw that I drug home a little flat belt uh, Champion blower and forge company drill press that will be a restore at some point in time. But anyway. The main reason that I brought this home, and the only reason that I'm really as interested in it as I am, is for whatever reason this ended up being the exact same lathe that I'm using now as my primary gunsmith lathe. And I use it for everything, but I mean it's what I've used for years and years as my gunsmith lathe. So when you stop and look at it, just what are the odds of that? So I'm, I'm actually really, really surprised. And when I told my wife, she says, well, do you really need one of the exact same thing you've already got? So that's an interesting question, but I felt it was kind of a foolish question nonetheless. So, anyway, appears to be in fairly decent shape now, and it's fairly complete. I've got the guard that goes on top, there's the end guard here, and there's actually another little bolt-on guard here that, that um, sets on here. Now, on my lathe, I've pulled it off. I've still got that guard, but I've pulled it off because I've converted mine. I've converted this into a cat's head or a spider, whatever you want to call it, so that I can run barrels all the way through. Now one of the advantages of this, as a gunsmith lathe, is it's got an inch and a half uh, bore through the spindle. So that's pretty generous from what you normally see on, on most of the lathes around. And there's several problems with this lathe, but I think it's a good base for, for what's here. We're missing badging here. This was the speed and feed chart. Um, the chart is a lubrication chart that goes on top of that. It's on this lathe and it's on my lathe. but everything gets set on top of there so they're both beat up. I'll have to redo something there. And there's a little um, spindle speed chart that goes on the end and, and that chart is here, although there again it's pretty well beat up. This is a little bit newer lathe than mine. There's about a hundred numbers or a hundred unit difference in serial number, a little more than a hundred units I think. So I'll have to investigate that further. But um, the bed seems to be in relatively good condition. There's some, some markings in it and some dinks in it like you expect to see where people drop chucks. There's a gouge on the back side and things like that. So I haven't really cleaned it up very much to see what kind of condition it's actually going to be in. We'll get out some mics and we'll, or some dial indicators and we'll actually kind of dial us in and find out where it is. The compound had been pulled off of here or it hasn't been pulled off, it's here, but it's loose. It's only got one of the bolts, I think. Um, no nuts, it's, it's there. The bearing for the lead screw is in a box. It, it came with it, and it is missing, from what I can find, the gear that runs the apron back and forth off of the lead screw. So that's why the hand wheel's off. I do have the hand wheel. Everything else appears to work on it. The clutch is, is free. A lot of times these will be seized up, and the guys will try and... and loosen them up with a pair of channel locks or something like that and they're actually and they, they're actually reversed so instead of tightening down going to the right way they tighten going to the left and everybody cranks on them with a pair of ice grips and they seize them in pretty tight but this one's free I actually did run this now it's got a 110 motor on it and that will probably change I'll, I'll kind of tell you my plan for this as time goes on I think what I'm going to do is I've thought about this a little bit it's got a 110 motor on it now I'm guessing it's about a horse, maybe it's a horse and a half. Um, I'm going to move the camera down so you can see at least a little glimpse of that here in a bit. 
the end gearing on it here is it binds up and it I think it's just out of adjustment whoever had, whoever's been playing with it I don't think they really understood the how everything needed to interact so there's some things that just are not set right I don't think the gears are set right on the banjo is what I've, I've loosened it up and played with a little bit but so I think we just need to adjust the clearances on those it looks like this gear has been changed um, this is a manufactured gear whereas the the one that is uh, on mine is very similar to this except it's got holes in it so this has been replaced at some point in time and there may be a little more play in some of these than I like this machine actually feels tighter than, than the machine that I'm running so I think it's um, I think it's a good base to start out with. I lubed it up a little bit, and of course there's no no wicks down in the in the oilers here, so it's leaked out the headstock already. I did that and made sure it was free before I ran it. The headstock actually sounds pretty good from the little bit that I've run it now. There appears to be quite a bit of backlash when you initially start playing with the the controls, but it's from looking at it, it's just in how the collars are set up and where those stops are once you get to where the threads are it actually feels very tight now that may change once we get to once I get to cleaning those up and seeing what the clearances are but all in all it looks like a good basis for a machine it came with a three and a four jaw chuck which I don't know the condition of them yet they're you know they're they're there I haven't played with them at all uh, came with a steady rest, although it looks like there's been a repair done to the hinge on it. Quite a few drills and some cutters and stuff. Nothing that amounts to anything really major. Um, no tool post, which there again, that's okay. I run a quick change tool post on my on the other machine. So I think my initial thoughts on this is this is going to be a complete restoration. The one that I'm currently running, I've got tooled relatively well. Plus, I've got a production tail stock and a production cloth cross slide that I have done a video on that, so I'll try and remember and link it up there, showing those in use. My initial thought is, I think this lathe here, once it's redone, this will probably replace the lathe that I've got in there, and we'll do a little work to that lathe, and that will um, get the production lathe and or the production tail stock and cross slide permanently mounted to it, and we'll just leave that set up as a production or a, as a turret lathe or as a production lathe. I, I've run it that way in the past. It's kind of a pain in the rear to set it up and, and convert everything over. But I think that's probably what will happen if it works out. Now this one has got a single phase 110 motor on it. And like I say, the headstock sounds pretty good. It seems to run fine. I will probably change that over the, the long term plan if we're going to put this into daily use basically is we'll go ahead convert it to three phase probably with a VFD um, I've got enough three-phase equipment that I could realistically run the big phase converter and uh, just start running some of this three-phase equipment off of it. Um, I do like running VFDs. You've got a little more speed control. You don't have to change your belts quite as much, and that's probably what will happen to here. Happen with this. I've got a Schumatech digital readout mounted on the Sheldon that I'm using now. I don't know if I'll, I've got another Schumatech that I could mount on this lathe. We'll mount a digital readout on it one way or the other. I may stay with the Schumatech. Uh, we may go ahead and invest in something else, you know, something a little more current that maybe has a little more capabilities, although I don't fully utilize the capabilities that I've got on the Schumatech DRO, so potentially I could put one on this and, and be perfectly happy with it. But, Anyway, they, those are the thoughts long term. Whether we'll actually do it that way, I don't know. But those are my initially th initial thoughts. I'm not in a hurry to get started on it. I've got several other projects that need to be finished up before I really get into this one. This may be a good winter project if I get that far. Let's see. Don't know what else I can share with you about it. Um, just one of the finds that you run across if you happen to be at the right place at the right time. All the drawers are there. I spent I spent most of the day, three quarters of the day, um, just cleaning up it in the drill press. Um, anytime we bring in these machines, especially out of an old farm building or something like that, why you've uh, you've got a whole lot of mice nests, which this had one in, in one drawer and and things like that and in all honesty the stuff that you can haul home from them and the diseases that they can carry with you bother me a whole lot more than what we've got going on in the world right now so I wanted to wash everything down before I got it back here before I left a dog around it 
um, to be sniffing and, and doing that kind of thing. So it's been out in my little alleyway here, and I've just spent the day degreasing it and hosing it all down. You know, spray a little degreaser on it and let it soak, and and then um, spray it off. So I think we've got it pretty well clean. That's why we see some water pooling in the end of the of the tray down there. It's missing one of the missing one of the little knobs. I think missing the knobs maybe all every Sheldon has to be missing one. Let's see if I can move that down a little bit more. Yeah, every Sheldon lathe has to be missing one knob because I'm missing one on the other Sheldon that's on one of the drawers. So I'll have to look around and see if I can't pick up a couple of them. Drive mechanism, you can't really see anything. It's a standard under drive unit. Looks to all be original. I see a chip out of the out of one of the shivs on the pulleys. Not going to affect anything, but it's one that got dropped, beat up, something. But everything else looks to be in pretty good shape. Everything kind of works as it should. And uh, I think it's a good basis for a restoration. So when we get to this and, and whenever we decide exactly what we're going to do beyond just our initial measurements of it, why, we'll, uh, we'll probably do a complete series on it. I think it'll be interesting. There's enough of these old Sheldons around that they kind of hold your interest. I think they're a really good machine. There's a few things that are a little unique about them that for me uh, as a gunsmith or as having been a gunsmith for years and years, the, the main thing I like is the large spindle bore. That inch and a half is something you don't find on a whole lot of stuff on, on a 10 inch lathe or a lathe this size. All in all, I think it's a, it was a pretty good find. I got a real good deal on it. And um, I think it's something we can work with a little bit. So hopefully you'll find this a little interesting. and. Uh, any comments or suggestions or information you've got for me, leave it in the comments section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.